this guy as a young man had a dream, a dream to become a big movie star, to come to uh, Hollywood and to become a great director and producer and a writer and all those kind of dreams he had. Of course, everyone told him it can't be done. But, you know, he wouldn't take no for an answer, and he moved across from New York to Los Angeles to Hollywood. And, of course, one day, after struggling, like we all do in the beginning, to get into TV and into movies, he had this idea of writing a script. And in longhand, he wrote this script, which was Rocky. It's all about dreams, you know, and by the way, dreams cost nothing, they're free. Uh, the hard part is just keeping them going, and please keep them going, because we're here for one simple reason. He believed in the dream, I believed in the dream, and our dreams come true, and there's no reason every one of yours can't either. I used to sit in this little apartment, and it was a room. As a matter of fact, the room was so small, I remember I was able to open up the window and close the door while sitting on the bed at the same time. It was like eight feet by eight feet by nine feet. And, but the one thing about that room, there was really very little distraction. So I would sit there propped up in bed, and I'd go out with my big pen and, and legal pad and just start writing these, these stories. And, and most of them were, were, were very, very trivial. But there was something about the process of unrealized dreams. I was always brought back to this subject because I think it's one of the most enduring subjects and one of the most difficult passages for people to accept that they never were realized in their own lifetime, that they just didn't get that shot. I decided it was a time to come to California. So I went to California. And I moved in the valley, and things weren't going very, very well there. As a matter of fact, I had to go out and try to sell my dog because he was either uh, do that or, or uh, he just was not going to be very well fed. And then one night, I went to see uh, Muhammad Ali fight. For one brief moment, this supposed stumble bump turned out to be magnificent in the fact that he lasted and knocked the champion down. I said, boy, if this isn't a metaphor for life, his entire life crystallized at that moment. He will be remembered for all eternity, at least uh, uh, among the fight fans. He did something extraordinary. I said, now that, that is probably what I need as a catalyst for an idea. A man who's going to stand up to life and take one shot and maybe go the distance. So I started to write. And it was one of those writing frenzies. And three days later, I came up with the script of Rocky. Now, the script by no means was a finished piece of material. It was probably about 90 pages, and maybe 10% of it remained in the final script, but it was done. I first met uh, Bob Shardoff and Erwin Winkler, and I believe I was there on, on a, a, a casting call. So we're talking a little bit, and I guess I really wasn't right for the acting part. And on the way out, I said, oh, I don't know if it matters, but I do a little bit of writing. He goes, really? He says, yeah, I'm writing this, this story. This, um, I have this thing about wrestlers, and I might do something about boxing. Well, he says, well, bring it around. And I thought, if I hadn't stopped on the way out, you know, that's why I tell all actors or writers, don't give up, keep talking. Eventually, you might hit a nerve somewhere, and they go, ah, come on back. And if they didn't say, come on back, or bring it later and let's see what you've developed, I wouldn't be sitting here. So I have to give incredible credit to their, uh, to their insight and their patience, and they're willing to take a chance, which um, it doesn't exist much anymore, unfortunately. Originally, when I brought the script to them, they were fairly enthusiastic about it. The one thing they were not enthusiastic about was me playing the part, and, and I really can't blame them at the time. But there was something inside of me that, that you know, this opportunity is never going to come around. And I really wasn't used to money, and I had no idea of what I would be missing. But the temptation started to come forward. First, it was uh, twenty-five grand, then a hundred thousand dollars. I never heard of a hundred thousand because I had had like a hundred six. 
dollars in the bank, and like I said, I had to sell my dog, and things were not looking very, very good. Uh, my $40 car had just blown up, so I was taking a bus to work. And but still, it, it didn't matter. I wanted to stick with it. Then it went up to 150,000, 175,000, it went up to 250,000. Now my head was starting to spin. And it went up to 330,000. And probably, I heard it went up to 360,000. And I thought, all right, you know, you've really managed poverty very well. You've got this down to a science. You really don't need much to live on. I had, I had like, sort of figured it out. So I was not... Um, in, in any way uh, used to, uh, to the good life. So I thought, you know what? If I, I know in the back of my mind, if I sell the script and it does very, very well, I'm going to jump off a building and if I'm not in it. So this is one of those things where you just roll the dice and you fly by the proverbial seat of your pants and say, all right, I got to try it. I got to just do it. I may be totally wrong. And I'm gonna be taking a lot of people down with me, but I just believe in it. We were working with the handheld camera at the time with, with Garrett Brown, and it was uh, somewhat experimental. And he'd film me running through shopping malls and up down the steps and flights, uh, I mean, curved corridors along the river until finally my legs basically gave out and I'm like writhing on the ground and I want to <laughs> rise up and say, John, I'm dying here. And he goes, no, no, use it. Use the pain. I said, for what? I mean, I'm in misery. He goes, well, no, no. You know, it, it's giving your character, it's, give, it's giving him some depth. I said, it's giving me bruises. It's giving me like agony. I can't sleep at night. Like the scene where we just jumped down and saw this ship along the dock, this uh, uh, docked along the pier. And he said, just jump out, run as fast as you can along <laughs> the ship. And, and, and I'm running and running. I said, you know what? My legs are buckling. I'm, I'm literally going to crash down here. Teeth are going to go, jaw, face. I'm just going to be ground down to this flat-faced image. Please. And, and I just barely made it. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. You can't be alone. To really succeed, no man really is an island. When you find the right components in your life, the right people that gel with you, then you feel as though you, you're invincible. It may be a fallacy, but you at least feel as though you can, you can take all that life has to dish out. At the very end of our lives, if we can still say, you know, we were never humbled, we were knocked down, but we got up, and I can say, I lived life with integrity and I took all the blows, as the song says, and I'm, I still prevailed. I think that's, a, that's a, a good epitaph for anyone. It's all about dreams, you know, and by the way, dreams cost nothing, they're free. Uh, the hard part is just keeping them going and Please keep them going because we're here for one simple reason. He believed in the dream, I believed in the dream, and our dreams come true, and there's no reason every one of yours can't either.